I'm Amy the Bunny Lady, and this is my partner, Elusive, Ellie for short. High five. Good job. <laughs> and today we're going to talk about blind rabbits and how you can help them stay comfortable and active in their home environment. If you're new to our channel, welcome. We give tips and tricks for how to make sure you have a happy and healthy bunny in your home. So if that's the kind of thing you're interested in, go ahead and hit that subscription button and the notification bell next to it so you never miss any of our weekly videos. Sometimes you may have a blind rabbit or a partially blind rabbit living with you and you don't even realize it. It's because usually this is not something that happens overnight. This is something that will usually become more prevalent slowly over time. So you may not notice the changes in your rabbit's behavior until you know they're pointed out to you. There are a number of ways that you can kind of figure out that they probably do have some vision impairment. The most obvious way to tell that there's some kind of vision impairment is if you see some kind of cloudy whiteness in your rabbit's eye. This is, your rabbit is developing cataracts and this is something that can develop slowly over time or it can be something that over the course of a few months your rabbit goes from being able to see to being completely impaired. It can happen in both or one eye, but basically there'll be like a cloudy film that forms on your rabbit's, the lens of your rabbit's eye and it slowly becomes more opaque over time. Growing up, my family had a rabbit that had cataracts in both eyes and eventually she was completely blind. Also, my rabbit Tenshi, she also uh, was starting to develop a cataract in one of her eyes. If you see that white cloudiness in their eye, that does mean that they're starting to develop cataracts and it may lead to blindness or impaired vision um, in the near future or in the coming years. Other changes that you might notice are just changes in your rabbit's behavior. You might notice that they bump into things kind of frequently. Now, I will say it's kind of normal for rabbits to bump into things while they're zooming around. That's just because they're going so fast they're not even paying attention and they can't quite control themselves as well. But if you notice them as they're not zooming, when they're just kind of popping around, they will occasionally bump into something. That's an indication that they might be blind or partially blind because if they're going blind in one eye, that can affect their depth perception. So they might not be able to get around as easily and might end up bumping into something. You will also, of course, notice that your rabbit is moving more slowly and carefully. They'll be less likely to, to quickly hop across the room and they'll take their time to make sure that they don't bump into anything as they go. In this same way, your rabbit will probably spend a lot more time around the perimeters of the room. Usually there's a lot more landmarks on the perimeter of the room, so it'll help your rabbit create like a mental map in their head. They'll be able to go around the room and be like, okay, this is a furniture leg, so I know the other objects that are nearby because I have this mental map in my head and I know where everything is. And they can do that more easily on the edges of the room than in the middle of the room where it's just kind of a free open space and it gets a little bit more confusing to like figure out where objects are in comparison to other objects. So the mental map is more likely to get confused. Rabbits who are blind are also a little bit more easily startled. So I remember when Tenchi was starting to go blind, sometimes she would get distracted, she wouldn't notice, she wouldn't really be paying attention to me. And there was one time in particular, I remember I entered the room and she was cleaning herself and she wasn't really paying attention. Um, and then all of a sudden she looked up and she saw that I was there and she didn't remember me coming in. So she got like super scared all of a sudden because she hadn't seen me because I, I must have come in on her blind side. So they are more likely to get startled. Loud or strange noises are also more likely to startle your rabbit because they can't see the object that's making the noise to try to understand what it is. So things like that can also be a lot scarier for rabbits when they're blind than when they're not. So just because rabbits can't see doesn't mean that they can't be happy and it doesn't mean that they can't be active. It just means that they're going to be a little bit more careful. They can still navigate their world, maybe not just as easily as a rabbit who has their vision, but they can still navigate, you know, pretty, pretty well. They have other senses that can actually really help them uh, to, to get around. And if you think about it, rabbits in the wild, they go, they dig tunnels and there's not really any light down in those tunnels. So they have to be able to get around without seeing, at least when they're navigating their way through those tunnels. So they have characteristics that allow them to get around even when they can't see. 
The first one is their whiskers. They're actually very important for your rabbit because their whiskers can feel any objects that are within the vicinity and let your rabbit know that they're about to run into something. Now your rabbit does have to be going a lot slower for the whiskers to be able to help, but that is a sense of touch, like how we would use our hands to feel things around. Rabbits are using the whiskers. Another very important characteristic is your rabbit's sense of smell. That can, they have a very good sense of smell, kind of like dogs. They can use their sense of smell in order to, you know, find their way around their markings. Their sense of smell is very important for helping them understand their surroundings, especially when they're visually impaired. And then of course, rabbit's hearing will also help them be able to locate people or movement in the room <laughs> so that um, even though they can't see it, they can know, okay, there's something happening in that direction so they can have like a better understanding of stuff that's happening even if they are visually impaired. Now there are some things you can do to really help your rabbit out as they are navigating their way through the world when they are blind or partially blind. So the first thing that you can do is make sure you keep all of the furniture and objects in the room in the same place because your rabbit will be able to use the relative location of all of the different objects in order to find their way around. And they'll be a lot more likely to bump into things if they're moved or in a different place or there's a new object in the room. So this goes for both furniture within your room, so keeping any tables in the same place and chairs, bookshelves, keeping everything in the same place, but it also means within their enclosure you want to make sure you keep all of their rabbit furniture, their rabbit plate, the rabbit food bowls, their litter box, their hidey houses. You want to make sure you keep all of that stuff in the same place as well so that your rabbit will be able to very easily make a, their way around their own home without kind of getting confused because everything has moved. Another thing you can do that is really helpful for blind rabbits is to make sure that you announce yourself as you enter the room, as you, as you enter the room or you come into their vicinity, like go closer to pet them. When you walk into a room that your rabbit is in, start speaking softly to them so that they can understand that someone is there and they understand that that someone is you because they'll be able to recognize your voice. But also if you're going to go and pet your rabbit, then doing something like flickering your fingers as you go closer, something that will let your rabbit know that you're about to touch them and your hand is right there, because it's quite possible that you'll go to touch your rabbit, they didn't realize that your hand was so close, and then all of a sudden they get super startled because they didn't realize you were gonna go pet them. So doing something like that can really help to make sure that your rabbit can understand where you are in relation to them. Something that you can do to make sure that your rabbit stays safe while they're wandering around and exploring is to make sure you cover any kind of sharp corners that they might run into. So you don't want your rabbit to like bonk into the really sharp corner of a bookshelf or something like that. Covering anything that could potentially injure your rabbit with tape, or if it's a very sharp corner, potentially covering the edges with cardboard. Something like that can help your rabbit have a safer time while they have fun exploring. In a similar vein, to protect your rabbit, you want to make sure that you block off any areas where they might fall down. So this includes making sure your rabbit no longer has access to any stairs because uh, you don't want them to hop over the edge and fall down. Many rabbits also like playing on platform toys like cat towers, but now is the time where you may want to take those types of toys away because you don't want your rabbit to fall off or jump down incorrectly because uh, they can't see the floor, they don't know where the floor is, and there's potential for injury there if they land incorrectly. So those are the types of toys you may want to take away from them at this point, just in order to keep them safe while they are having fun. And the types of activities that you can give your rabbit that can actually be a lot of fun and helpful for the mental enrichment at this point, it's to give them scent-based foraging activities. So hiding treats in like a, a toy, hiding a treat in the middle to help your rabbit figure out how to get it out, spreading around dried herbs either in their hay pile or around the floor for your rabbit to sniff out and find. These scent-based activities can be really fun for your rabbit and it's great for their mental enrichment to continue to get that variety in their environment. Honestly, this is great for rabbits that aren't blind as well. It's a great activity, but particularly for rabbits who are blind, it can really help to enrich their world and just help, help with their overall happiness to have the types of activities that allow them to use the senses that they still have. 
If you found these tips useful, I do also have a Bunny Basics guidebook that you can get. It goes over the basics of rabbit care and you'll also be joining my mailing list where I send out tips and tricks twice a month to give you all of the information that I've learned both from having rabbits and caring for the shelter buns, uh, for the rescue rabbits at the shelter that I volunteer at. So you can head on over there. I will have all links here and in the description for you. And that's it. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching and I do hope that we will see you next week.